I have no idea why nothing else works except for these right oh. now. I mean, I don't know what the, I mean, I can hear it. When I tested audio, I could hear it through these. I could hear it through my speakers. Y'all couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear you. I'm like, okay, man. What's All going right. on? So, fellas, we are Yo, live. Oh. Welcome to Chop It Up. Oh, we're live, we're right we're live. We are live and in color. I can't, I can't cuss no and more. Hopefully, right. Yeah, no, no cuss. All right. <laughs> but this is Chop It Up, the weekly show. Is, is my... Is, is what? my reception messed up, or is it everybody? Is everybody a little choppy? No, nah, nothing's choppy to me. Mm -mm, I'm good. Just me? Okay. Just you. The AT you got over there. That's what it is. <laughs> AT and T. Dang, I don't, man. I don't, I don't, shots. I don't know what you got, to be honest. Is it AT and T? <laughs> he was like, "What you on that cricket over there? What you on, dude?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the cricket mobile house. man, don't do me like that. All right, but this don't is chopping up the, the weekly like that. show that we do. <laughs> Just four guys having those conversations that we do every time we go into the barbershop. We just bring those conversations online. Everything is off the top. Everything is off the dome. Nothing scripted. And we make no apologies for anything that we say. None. It's our authentic thoughts. All right. So I'm, gonna let you, I'm Kevin here in Phoenix um, where, praise God, that it rained at least a little last night. Amen. Um, it melted or it evaporated before it hit the ground, but oh well. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let the guys introduce themselves, and then we'll jump into today. All right, let me go and introduce myself before I have any more technical issues over here. The tech guy, I don't know how to turn on audio. On the system. Anyway, I don't know what y'all were saying about, but y'all were talking about me, and I don't like it. I'm just saying. So I'm already coming here a little off, so that's all right. It's going to be on today. Okay. Jordan is not the goat. But anyway, um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just playing. Tari Watkins from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, good to be here. Can't wait to. Uh, nah, never mind. I'm not gonna say that. All right, Derek, go ahead. <laughs> Yo, Derek's out here, Oklahoma City. Shout out to everybody who uh, don't forget to watch behind their ears before they get out the shower. And be funky if you don't. Come Ugh. on, man. Ugh. Ear, ear funk, funk is nasty. Is the worst. Ear funk is na ear funk nasty. Is, that's ridiculous. Disgusting. You ever taste somebody's food that tastes uh, that smell like the behind of somebody's <laughs> ear? Whoa, hold on. Time out. <laughs> the food tastes like ear funk. Yeah, bro, now, it's bad. Now we ain't talking about chitlins, right? We talking about something else? No, 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 no. Uh, uh. You can't. That's you can't say like, that chitlins around Kevin. That's the hey. slave food. Remember? Chit <laughs> that, that's not even slave food. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> let me, let me go. jump in. Here we go. Yeah, you might as well get it in now. Go ahead. We got <laughs> Arian Lewis from Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Rounding out the fabulous four. Let's do it. Hey. <laughs> All right. So we got a lot to talk about, but I want to kick it off. Let's there's we got there was so much that happened last week that we didn't get a chance to talk about it. But let's just kind of chop off, start chopping it up on Kanye and Kamala. Mm. So we had two two things happening in the political realm, and there's you know the whole Democratic National Convention going on right now. But Kanye right. is making headway as far as running in some states. He's getting on the ballot, it looks like, or trying to. Um, but then history was made with Kamala being the first actual candidate on a major ticket being the first black woman or woman of color so mm -hmm. question i have to throw out there to start it off is kanye for real or do they just think black people are that stupid <laughs> there why you put your glasses on man because yeah, i was the only i was the only one that didn't have glasses on i felt left out i felt left out man what <laughs> Oh, funny. You didn't that, think I that noticed was... that, did you? <laughs> you were real sly with it. He was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's 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 talk about the fact that that question wasn't uh, in the least bit slanted at all. I mean, no, not, <laughs> not, even, not even close. No, not at all. And, and Kanye from Chicago, but I'm going to be honest. <laughs> That's your boy. Jesus walks Kanye. We good? This new Kanye? Uh, you know, I uh, the thing that probably 
frightens me the most about Kanye is that he, it is obvious, it is admitted um, that he has mental health challenges. And um, as sympathetic and empathetic as, as we are with, with that, mm-hmm. where I get confused is why is he being taken so seriously with this common knowledge that <laughs> he, he, you know, he has an, uh, a mental impediment. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not something that you can just dismiss being at the, uh, the you know, the number one spot in the government. That's, <laughs> that's scary. Yeah. That is scary. And so, yeah, that, that makes me wonder, okay, good people, what, why is everybody throwing all this weight behind him? What's, what's really going on? Mm-hmm. Derek. There, uh, <clears throat> there uh, was. Don't, don't think a, too long um, about your response, bro. Because I, I know, I know. I, I believe that <laughs> the number of votes that um, Hillary lost by in 2016 could easily be a successful deterrent for Kanye. Easily. Easily. I think if he can steal those votes, then the enemy wins. <laughs> the if, enemy. if he if he can if he can steal those votes, that's the only thing. Kanye does not have a significant chance, a realistic chance of winning. Um, and so all he has to do in order to uh, distract. Because there, there are going to be some voters that are 18 to 25 that aren't going to do their research. They aren't going to take their civic duty, their responsibility um, seriously. And they will hand their popular vote over. And I think that is significant enough to take him seriously. Yeah. So when you say take him seriously, uh, it, it's twofold. One is uh, the people that are, are not educated voters, uh, that are not strictly party voters, that are looking for an opportunity to cast their vote... If he can get them and and they take him seriously, then I think uh, that's all that needs to happen in order for the next four years to be very similar, if not worse, than the current four years. And I and I say worse in enemy in jest, but there's an underbelly of seriousness to it. Yeah. Stick, Tori. So, was there a general question, or you just want our thoughts? Let's just just chop it up. Let's talk about it. What the heck? Uh, oh, did, did we lose you, Darian? All no, right, you so did. hang on. All right, so All for right. me, man, I uh, I remember when I first heard it, I thought it was a joke. Then I did a little research and I found that it wasn't a joke. <laughs> So uh, the very first thing that I thought, and I'll be I don't know how many people thought this or not, but it was just me. Was this brother put in place to do that to just to take away votes? That's my question. Yes. And so I'm not a big fan of conspiracy theories. That's never been me. That's um, my language. But this, say it again. That's my language. Uh, but this one made me think, though, man. Because you, I mean, you think about the whole relationship that he and Trump had in the beginning. And um, maybe that was put into his ear because he knows that there would be a segment of voters, and Derek has already said it, between 18 and 25, uh, especially young people of color, that will very well pull their vote. A lot of time, a lot of them first-time voters uh, in this type of presidential or this presidential election, um, and that would dilute the numbers some. So, again, that was my first thought. My <laughs> my second thought was, what the? F- yeah, not, not- <laughs> hey, <laughs> come on! Hey, hey, we're in the barbershop, right? We're in the barbershop, right? We're in the barbershop. Come on, this is coffee in my cup. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, man. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> ew, ew, ew. That's nice. We're just uh, playing with sound effects. It's nice. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to call up my, my mom and dad, man, and say, hey, um, y'all know what's going on here? Because they, they've always been deep political. I remember when I was in elementary school, middle school, 
They're deep in the campaigns. I mean, when I was a freshman in high school, I knew who was running for Senate, for Congress, for state legislature. Mm-hmm. I mean, so that's that's been ingrained in me my whole life. And so, yeah, man, I there, there's a whole lot of thoughts going through my mind about this whole Kanye thing and and what is what is this uh, what is it the what is it what's the slogan or the party the party party or what is it what is it I thought it was the birthday party birthday party that's what it is and I'm like really <laughs> I'm like right okay right right and so I hey I man I don't know I mean I think about the album that he put out last year and which I like by the way I listened to it quite often not which gonna is lie hot. Mm-hmm. it was hot. Oh, I, it was I'm, hot. I'm not gonna lie I, like I was listening to it yesterday God is? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's... Anyway, so, uh, I don't know, man. It's... Is he running as an independent? I haven't I haven't dug that deep, to be to be honest with you. Honestly, I, I do not know. Um, I, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know, I just, I don't know which party, party party would take him. He can't run. He's not really running as a Democrat or Republican because those are locked up, of course. So he's gonna have to really be an independent. Yeah, he's not running. He's running as a libertarian, but that's JoJo Jurgensen. So I don't know. I mean, that's those are my thoughts that I just threw out there and uh, had in the beginning. And honestly, I haven't given much thought to it within the past month or two. Yeah, because I, I'm not I'm not wasting any brain space on that. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm trying to be funny. I'm I'm serious. I'm just. I'd, well, in, I don't. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a distra- I don't think he's a purposely planted distraction. I honestly think this is organic. So. No, I don't. I think. Uh, I think. I think people are grateful. <laughs> I think people are very thankful that he did. But I don't think he was. I don't think he was a plan at all. I really don't. I think this was truly he's, organic. Who's thankful and grateful? That's the real question. Well, well, because there's been reports that that there have been Republican operatives canvassing on his behalf and doing those things to to work to get him on the ticket uh conversations with uh jared so you you, you darian tory you know me i am i uh, i'm a i'm not a conspiracy theorist i'm a critical thinker right <laughs> so tomato tomato listen, tomato uh-huh. you, <laughs> i'm a critical thinker i think through why wow. Why, you Why does up, A, what is. B, and C all happen around the same time, right? Right. So I'm looking at this and saying, okay, <clears throat> I, I don't know that there is a grand conspiracy, but I do think that, as Darian mentioned, they are, there are some that are grateful. Um, but I, I think that bugs were probably put in his ear because um, this is he's been saying this for a little bit. I don't think this is just um, his hubris. I don't think it's just his ego. I think that that it it all it also is just and and the other thing I, I'm I'm afraid of is that can we be honest? No one really took Trump seriously. <laughs> Joe uh, Joe That's Wilson true. said the same thing. <laughs> no, no one took him seriously, That's and then true, all of didn't. a sudden it was like, wait, what? Who? When? Yeah. So it's 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 quote unquote scary enough that we're in an era where the norms that we have come to expect from politics, from government, from elections, is completely thrown out the window. It, it, we, you have a person that literally said, I can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and my people would love it. Mm-hmm. And everybody's and like, yeah. He's not, he's not wrong. So I, the thing that that concerns me is is that that demographic. But I don't even th- just say that demographic. I think I think there are those that would would literally just like, well, you know, we we've already had enough chaos. Let's see if we can have a little more chaos. So, how do we know any technical numbers that he has to have in order to uh, to actually swing this? Because I don't think he has enough time to get on every every state ballot. He doesn't have to. I was looking at it right now. It doesn't He's have what? to. You just, just a, go ahead. You know, I'm just saying you just gotta get on some major ones. Like ain't nobody fighting over Wisconsin. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Like he got on he got on Michigan's ballot, he got on Ohio's ballot. Like those are those are swing states. Yep. Um he already got so on, he doesn't Wisconsin have to get on everybody's wow. ballot. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I was joking in. about Wisconsin. Oh, 
I want to throw in a comment. Joe, uh, Joe Wilson is very, very active tonight. Thank you, sir. Hey, Joe. <laughs> but he said, uh, he said, I think people are really seriously tired of politicians. I think that's the dangerous part. Yeah. Is the fact that folks are just tired of politicians um, and that elite, that elitism. Now I'm, I'm paraphrasing. This is not what he said. Yeah. But that elitism that comes mm-hmm. with uh, being these professional politicians who have dedicated their entire careers you know, to the political process. So, yeah, well, we've, I, I, we've I already had that. With that. Yeah, we've already had that, though, because Donald Trump is not a, a career politician. We forget that the man has run before um, and he's flip flop parties before just parties by affiliation. Right. So, I mean, you look as far as a TV personality. I mean, Ronald Reagan wasn't a career politician. And so it's yeah. not like this is something new. So, I mean, mm-hmm. there's been there's been those people that have crept in. I mean, shoot, freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor of California at one point. Yeah. Steve mm-hmm. Largent was what, a senator in 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 Seattle and um Washington. In Washington. Yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so I mean, this this isn't something new. Yeah. Even on even on the big stage, it isn't something new. So, I get I I I get his point um and I appreciate the point of the career politicians and we're tired of it, but you've had so I mean, Ross Perot, I mean, you've had so many people that have run mm-hmm. for office and haven't been a career politician. And right now, the only people that have really been that successful is one Ronald Reagan, two terms uh, as president, uh, Donald Trump now one term as president. Um, and you've had other people throw their hat to the ring and get really, really close. Ben Carson, um, might not like him, but he wasn't a career politician. The man's a brilliant surgeon and a brilliant mm-hmm. doctor, uh, but he threw his hat in the ring also. So, I mean, there's there's quite a few people that have been in this before that aren't career politicians. But unfortunately, well, when they get into the ring, they turn into that career politician, mm-hmm. and it's almost like they've been that way the whole time. Right. I agree with 100%. Well, I was just going to say that the biggest difference with Trump, though, uh, with everyone else that we named is that they all came into the political um, arena uh, at a quote unquote smaller level. They were either Congress, Senate or governors before they hit the national stage um, with Trump. Well, he but he never got elected. My point no, he, is he didn't win. Yeah. Yeah. My point is uh, Trump is literally the only one that has never held a seat in anything. Yeah. And has sure. taken the highest office. Yeah. So to me, that automatically shifts the way we think concerning um, how we qualify candidates. You know, there's a lot of things that just he he shifted a lot, whether we <laughs> whether we uh, whether we like him or not. We, we you know, we got to respect the game that he brought to the table. Yeah. He has shifted the way we view candidacy in a major, major way. And so. Uh, yeah, I, I you know, I guess we can't really count a, a Kanye out. He has uh, he has the the popularity. He has <clears throat> obviously some the you know the financial backing, <clears throat> and he's willing to go out on his own. Yeah, if he can, if he can get enough uh, right pub, who knows? See, but thing that I, the thing I've told people is this: whenever we did have this conversation, was that I'm not really looking to see what he's going to do this year. Because this very well could be a momentum swing for him in four years. Um, we, we don't know. We, I, it could be just putting his name out there. Um, like I said, Donald Trump ran back in, when was it? 2000, was it four? It, no. It, it, it was earlier. Yeah, 2000? Yeah. Something like that. It was, it, was, it, was er, it was a long, not a long time ago, but what, 15, 20 years ago. So his name has been floating out there before, and he never did it. So my my question is, what type of momentum is this going to give him for another in the next four years or the next eight years, um, if he really is serious about it? So, and Darren made a really good point. I I think the other issue, though, is is that there's dissatisfaction with both candidates, both major candidates. It's been that way for a long time. Yeah, but this is a little more divided. I mean, for example, I remember oh, when yeah. I was yeah. um, when I was first year in college and could vote, and I was like, "So I get to choose between Clinton and Bush." Beautiful, <laughs> right? So right? I think this is 
there's such a disdain because like my daughter is just this is her first time voting as well and she's just like it's tomato tomato you know yeah you know creepy joe versus versus grab him <laughs> grab him don right creepy joe and grab him don wow <laughs> she's not wrong though <laughs> she's not so so that's that's how her generation is maybe approaching this and i'm right. not saying that she's she's talked about voting for kanye because I'd ask for all of my money back from her school. Um, <laughs> With interest. And right. Then some. <laughs> like, plus punitive damages, right? <laughs> yeah. But there is the, well, you know, it's like dogged if I do, dogged if I don't, right? Well, let me, can, can I just deviate for just a second? Because to me, you brought up a very big systemic problem. And that is the fact that we... Uh, we have been this two-party system yes. that has uh, uh, not not because of law, but simply because of the swing of power. Right. They have been able to squash the idea, the the legitimate idea of uh, a candidate that doesn't represent either one of those parties right. Right. being you know being taken seriously. That's right. that to me is where the biggest problem is. I would love to have four or five folks to choose from. You know. Um, oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, let's 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 get to talking about character now. Let's get to talking about track record. Let's right. get to really talking about, you know, instead of, you know, the devil or his cousin. Yeah, because that really is, I think, why people feel that way. Satan, Beelzebub, or Lucifer. Those are your choices. And if you'll notice, you'll notice I didn't lean which one was who. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just say it. You know, it's uh, it's just not. We we haven't had. We haven't had two people who, 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 to me, this is my opinion. We haven't had two people who have really uh, made America feel like these are the best two candidates. May have opposing views, may have opposing stances and opposing philosophies, but but as far as their leadership, their character, we have confidence that one of these two can lead us for the next four years into, um, you know, everybody's not going to like it, but. But we feel we we'll feel like we've been led by 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 true leaders. Well, I'll, we haven't had that in all. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll say for me for me it's been a minute. Obama versus McCain. I felt that that was at least okay. We have someone that's going kind of new blood, fresh blood, versus McCain. I, he was you know there were some things that I really liked from him. So that was probably the only one that I was like. If I really want to get down to the the issues and really get down to those things, there's maybe a toss up in that one for me. But yeah, as far as some of these other races and these other um, elections, it's just been like, look, I'm going to choose the the lesser of two evils. <laughs> so so why do you, okay? Am I the only one that feels like the nation has uh, low key actually kind of pushed certain people? That we would love to see run that will never put their name in the hat. Why? Why do those people tend to avoid successfully? By the way, um, answering the call to to these to these these higher levels of service because well, I I think it speaks to the whole part that uh, was it Joe Lewis uh, what was his name who was the guy that uh, that chatted what's his name in your feed Darian Joe. Joe Wilson. Oh, Joe, Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson. Um, there's a lot of those people that just don't like that game of politics. I mean, I look at Colin Powell. I mean, there's been there's been people <laughs> on exactly. both sides of the fence exactly. um, that said there were there were Democrats that said I'd vote for Colin Powell in a second, and they're not even close to being Republican, yeah. even though he would run as one. But he was like, I'm not doing it. He said, there's no way, no how. My wife would leave me. My kids don't want me to. Yeah. Even though if he would have ran, that brother would have done incredibly well, if not Landslide. Because he <laughs> was loved on both, on both sides yep. of the aisle. Yep. But, People trusted his character. They trusted, yes. they trusted yes. him. You know, we could like trust that what he said, he did. Period. But just like, just like you said, Darian, those people don't want to do it because... There has to be something, uh, whether it's being cutthroat or going back on your values or compromising or whatever the reason is, um, 
they just don't do it. I mean, Colin Powell could have ran it as independent, and he very well could have done incredibly well. Yeah. I know I would have voted for him yep. for sure. Yep. Um, even even Claudia, uh, my fiance, she said I would have voted for him. She says I hardly ever. She says I don't vote Republican, but I would have voted for him. And so, um, yeah, man, I I don't know, Darren. That, it's a, it's a great question. And I would love to know what the answer is of why these people that we see and they just do not want to run and be a part of politics at all. It's it's got to be the underlying issue of there's just a whole lot of shady stuff they don't want to get involved with. That that's the only thing I can think of. Well, Man, I, part of it also I think is, and I think the the clue to this is Biden running this year versus running the last running four years ago is that within some of the parties, there is an established, uh, really, if we can just, an old boy network, right? No, there you're is, right the first time, good old boy, good old boy system. You know, it, we have it in the church too, where you get put on because you've done just enough good service, right? Yep. And so I think that there is, uh, that Biden held out last four years because it was like, okay, it's Hillary's turn. And so everybody was like, all right, let's get out the way of Hillary because in all honesty, Hillary was supposed to be the person when Obama ran. When Obama ran the first time, it was supposed to be Hillary. Right, right. right. And so when no, he upset right. that well, apple he, cart, he totally, totally it's now, well, point. okay, Come Hillary, we'll, we'll give you this position, but it's your turn next. And then well, after part that, of that hmm? part of that was because of his son, too. So with his son passing, um, that was one of the other reasons he stated why he wasn't running. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, However, I mean. I'm not going to question that because, dude, his son died. So I know I get that, and me, I'm not. I'm, I'm not just, saying, but yeah, I, I think that if if he really wanted to, because he he had mentioned that you know Bo, his son wanted him to run. So there's there's a lot. Yes, he may not. It may have been too soon, but I don't think that that was the full weight of the decision for that. It might not have been. Derek, you over there studying something. He is, man. He, he, he got the right glasses right. on. Yeah. I mean, I got my, my I got my laptop open. I'm looking at, at some of the stuff uh, that, that you guys are talking about. I mean, uh, by the way, Kanye is running as an independent, um, along with Joe Jorgensen, who's a libertarian, yep. and uh, Howie Hawkins, which is representing the Green Party. Uh, but you just think about, like, why someone would run and why they don't. And oftentimes, I think that the people who should be in positions of power, um, they often choose not to because they feel as though they can be more effective in a different position. Um, you know, it's the, the teachers who care the most who are the ones that are quitting. Yeah. You know, it's like the people that should be CEOs of companies that choose to work in non-for-profits. I mean, I remember listening to my dad one time, he, where he drove buses for 40, 41 years. And uh, I kept telling him, man, you should be a supervisor. You should be a supervisor. He's like, nah, man, I need to be on the front lines, like down here. You know, I think that's just a common, the people with the, the good heart either want to preserve their goodness and they don't want to be behind the curtain. They don't want to be, they don't want to be a part of that. Um, and then the people who should not be in the powers are the ones who are bold enough to do it. But I think that's the same thing. That's that's in any case. You know, it's the it's the ignorant person who's overly confident is the one that's out there saying he can do it. Uh, he may not necessarily be the person that can do it, but he's the one that's saying he can and everybody buys into it. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a huge distraction, man. And I hate that, uh, for me personally, I hate that, that uh, I, I'm torn. I hate that Kanye is, um, is doing this at this, at this moment in this time in our history of the world in the United States. But at some point in time, somebody's going to have to do it. Somebody's got to break up the two, this two party system that's been running everything for so long. And I don't know who's going to do it. He could take that Russell Westbrook approach and be like, why not me? Um, and he could keep doing it. He got the money to do it. He can run as independent. I will say this though. Um, 67% of the uh, people that are from 18 to 29 that voted in 2016 are Democrats. Um, and so 18 to 29, 67% of the 18 to 29 year olds that voted in the 2016 uh, election are Democrats. And that's right up Kanye's alley. Yeah. Um, I don't know any necessarily that anybody's from 30 to 44, which the next age group up is really taking them that serious. Right. Um, hopefully everybody, uh, they understand that what's at stake 
Um, again, I'm being super judgmental and I'm throwing blanket statements over everything, but um, more power to him. I will, I will also say this too. Um, uh, Hillary Clinton lost to, to Donald Trump uh, by uh, that small margin. And uh, I will also say that there were four other people that were on the presidential ballot that year. Um, Gary Johnson was a libertarian. Jill Stein was a uh, Green Party. Evan McMullen was an independent. Derek Castle was a constitutionalist. And not only could that have been the people who swung, but it could have been three and a half million people that just didn't vote at all. So I don't know, man. I think when you get six people on the party and on the ballot, you know, the vote, I think, becomes a little bit diluted. Uh, not that I'm for the two party system, but this is crazy, man. Yeah, I, this is crazy. I think. Side note. Yeah. Did you all see the. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. The article that said that uh, the uh, electoral representatives will have to vote their populist. Did you see that? Yes. Isn't that crazy? Yes. I mean, that's why we put them in there. And they haven't, I don't know if they've been doing it, but isn't that crazy? But, but, well, well, yeah. That. That's a whole other thing because shouldn't that be done away with? If I if I live in North Dakota, <laughs> you still have your vote. You still have. We, hear me. We, it have becomes, the, we have the technology to to do away with this. We have it. It's in place. It's not. We just, just go by popular vote instead. Right. Absolutely. Because it, it's in place. It's happening all over the world, other than the United States. We're it, the only ones that are keeping this electoral college. And why was it put in place? Nobody has the setup that we have though. Why was it put in place? It's to represent the little guy. No. It's to represent the little guy. Nope. Actually, no. <laughs> it's about slavery. Re- regardless regardless of, of why it was put in place, it serves now as that. But we can, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that was put in place, uh, but that's not being used now. We can talk about the Second Amendment, right? The bare arms. We know why it was put in place. It's not why it's there now. So for us to, to talk about the original intent, I think is a waste of breath. I understand the the intent, but right now we're saying, what point does it serve? It's serving it's serving to represent but, the little guy. But how does it protect the little guy when it gives really the little guy more power? Because hear me, if the if the I, base of people are in major metropolitan areas mm-hmm. and they have a vote, why is their vote less important than the person that lives in North Dakota? So if you do popular popular vote, then it just swings the other way, right? Well, the well the, the other reason is this is because if we went if we took away electoral college and we went just by popular vote, you're gonna have parts of this country that will never see any type of political event, political uh, person. They would not they they wouldn't even they wouldn't even set foot in. North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, even the even the city itself. I forgot the name of it. She would kill me right now. I forgot the very first one. It does like that little mini, that little mini caucus up in New Hampshire, I believe. They mm-hmm. wouldn't even set foot up there anymore because it's a small <laughs> town of like what twelve hundred people, I think. Right. And so Indeed. they wouldn't even go to those places. It's still happening. And that's still happening. Again? That's still happening. We call no, them fly, no. we call them flyover states. You, there's no reason to go to that state because it's already for your. Your party, right? But it's, but it would be even it would be even worse if that wasn't in place. If if you didn't have the electoral college, even there would be even more flower states than there are right now. So the the equal representation of people being able to have a face to face or talk to a candidate. Not saying that the candidates are being their true self, but but the true thing of democracy of people being able to either hear from the candidates, have a rally, do whatever. Whether it's presidential, whether it's I don't know um, uh, Senate, whatever legislature, uh, those places they it, it, they would be they will fall by the wayside. So I'm not saying that's the only reason, but that will be a huge part of a downfall of not having the electoral college. Uh, the electoral college. Yep. Those, those if Kanye funding, can if Kanye funding, can win Florida and California, yeah. guess what? <laughs> Hey, ain't nobody going to Iowa? Come on, man. <laughs> well, they start in Iowa. That's the, right. that's the heart of the country. They start in Iowa. Right. There will, there will be no Iowa caucus. And so, you, I mean, you're talking about money. Yeah, you're right. talking about finances. Yeah. You're talking but about jobs. Hold on, but why wouldn't there? It, you because, don't necessarily need this. 
because of the number of people that live in Iowa versus the number of people that live in Florida and Michigan and New York and Texas and California because of the sheer number. Now we're talking about the actual popular vote, okay. meaning the numbers. So you've got you don't have as many people living in Iowa as you do in Florida. Okay, but I mean, let's let's actually let's actually great. let's actually dissect this for a second because the Iowa caucus, the New Hampshire, uh, whatever that thing's Primary. called, mm-hmm. the yeah. primary, yeah, that's uh, all of these different primaries that are around the country. All of that's still necessary to decide the candidate that we wind up doing the popular vote for. So it's not a, uh, it's not affecting the electoral mm-hmm. college. It's not affecting that at all. No, it doesn't. It, yes, it does. Because whenever whenever you get down to your two parties, there's still money that is pumped into certain states for advertising, for for legs of travel, for for uh, for presidential candidates of either party visiting those states. It's not just for the nomination for their party. Okay. It's it's all that money that's being pumped into it after they've already decided who's going to run with each party. You've right. got billions of dollars being pumped into these states to get their electoral college vote. And if you pull that away, there's going to be so many states that are going to, I mean, you're talking about losing millions upon millions of dollars for a lot of these states that they're not going to see, and that would be detrimental to their economy. So do, again, do we ahead. ever hear anything about Iowa after the caucus? Of course we don't. But you're saying if we do away with it, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. What, no, I'm t- when do you hear when do you hear about New Hampshire other than the primaries? When do you hear about Iowa other than the caucus? Once those once those uh, uh, once the candidates are elected or selected, they they become that flower state that you're talking because about. Then they all they focus flip. on then is the areas that are the battleground states, the areas that are in contention. Arizona is getting a lot of attention right now because Arizona is considered a battleground state. We're turn we're a purple state right now. We've been heavily right. red. We're shifting. So if you take away the electoral Texas college, the same thing. if you take away the electoral college, it still basically gives one person one vote, one band, one sound. Right? So you, <laughs> now, I'm not have to saying, throw that in there. I, I, I'm definitely not saying <laughs> one band. I'm definitely not one sound. I'm definitely not <laughs> drumline. That's my that's my movie. But I, I'm definitely not saying that I'm. I'm not a proponent of it, but I do understand there are ramifications. Uh, and I get what you're saying, Darian, about we don't hear anything about the Iowa caucus after that. But, I mean, you've got you've got states that are still key swing states, not swing states, but a key states to be able to bolster your numbers just in case you don't get a swing state. I mean, you may want to try to pick up Alabama and Mississippi or maybe Kansas or, or, or maybe, uh, um, um, I don't know, Wisconsin and maybe try to pick up an Iowa mm-hmm. to help bolster your numbers so that if you don't win a state like Florida or if you lose a state like Virginia um, and if mm-hmm. you lose it, that, that you will be able to still have what? Let me, uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm calling out wrong there. states there. Derek got something. Yeah. I, well, I'm just looking at the numbers. I'm like, oh, oh you could lose that one. Oh, we can lose that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can lose that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I heard what you're saying. I heard what you're saying. I mean, insert the right state. I heard what you're saying. Because, because for me, I'm gonna try to win every state possible. And if I can bolster do my that. numbers a little bit, but don't do that. Here, here's the thing, though. You're don't, thinking. Don't do what? You're thinking. State, don't, don't try to win every state. But see, hey, you man, won't. The you electoral won't, college. You is, want is Michigan, the we're thinking Michigan Ohio, Florida, Florida, Texas, Florida, Florida I need California, California yes, Washington. I need, I need Texas. I know. Why well, you gonna get Texas? But here, here's anyway. the thing. <laughs> if you take out the electoral college, though, I you're taking no out the you need to win that. states. If you take out the electoral college, you take out the need to win states. You're winning the hearts and minds of people. Because here's the other thing to think about, is that back in the day, there was not as much, in my opinion, there probably wasn't as much movement between states. And so you could focus on the the, the culture of Virginia versus the culture of North Carolina versus the culture of Iowa. Phoenix is getting, in the metro area, we have on average 200 new people coming every day. Why? From Why? Because it's a wonderful city, except for when it's 189 degrees. All right? That's, that's 
360 days of the year, no, man. You only got five. D, left. you know it's not. Three months, <laughs> rest of the year, we're 70s and 80s. We're good. We're golden. While you're shoveling out snow, slipping on ice. I don't shovel snow and I don't walk on ice either. I'm too big to be walking on ice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I got too much potential energy, man. Once this <laughs> energy. Stuff, when this stuff get moving, it don't stop. So nah, man. <laughs> you can see me on ice. I ain't a polar bear. I'm not Santa Claus. I hey, I don't live in Alaska and I don't play hockey. So I'm not getting on ice, bro. I'm hey. But just my saying. point is, is that <laughs> there's a there's not there's more of a shift. And so what used to be win the state, because you can focus on what's in that state, if we take away the electoral college. It's no longer I'm going to win a state. I'm worried about more winning the hearts and minds of people because then I have a mandate from the country. Because the problem is, though, the last few elections is that, yes, you've won the Electoral College, but the majority of people in the country didn't want you. Didn't win the popular vote, right. Right. And so, therefore, now it's harder to lead because now, from in my opinion, it's harder to lead because you don't have this overwhelming the people voted me in. It was, I did my homework. I went to this neighborhood. I went to that neighborhood. My cronies redistricted the map. They put all of the, 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 the Democrats in a three mile radius and then everybody else is over here. So they did that and they won it because of strategy of winning districts and winning small neighborhoods as opposed oh, yeah. to winning the entire yeah. country. Oh yeah, North Carolina was infamous for doing that. For changing the district lines to favor one party over the other. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, but you know what? E- even even with doing the popular vote, that's still not going to eliminate all of that. Right. It's still not going to eliminate that because you no. do have you do have <clears throat> various cultural views that are going to change from from city to city, from state to state, and so you're still going to have a lot of that in there. But with the popular vote, yeah, to me, there there you're going to have more of a unified simplistic viewpoint of this is who we chose and this is this is us moving forward <laughs> like what our like what we do for our state Derek got that uh, stank face Derek got that stank you know face. you know i i remember hanging out with a with a couple of dads once and um you know <laughs> oh it was it was me my wife and my kids and it was they had you know their spouses and their kids as well and um i pulled the dads together and i said hey man what i want to eat they were like, let's go get pizza. Everybody cool with pizza. We was like, bet. We dropped in the car, took all 15 of us eat pizza. It was absolutely great. I can only imagine what that process would have been like if I was like, <laughs> hey, let's ask everybody what they want to eat. It would have been horrible. And 30 minutes later, we would have still been hungry. Did you just compare our country to pizza? Is that what you just did? And being married with kids. <laughs> He said the Listen. level of indecision. <laughs> so, we would have been we would have been at, at 15 different restaurants. He ain't wrong. Just trying to get food. So is he America Pizza wrong. Hut, Papa John's, Domino's? We all love it. We all love it. We all love it. All of them. All all of them. And, and, and this I, I think I think it, I do miss Matt. We'll find. Though. If that's the simple pizza Simons, have, if you want to tell us, if that's simple the pizza Simons. that you try, I'm choosing Kanye pizza. I'm just saying. <laughs> the Shaq, the Shaq pizza for Papa John. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know enough to to talk about it intelligibly. Um, I just know what I what I do know. I try to stand on, you know, and give grace to myself in all my ignorance. Um, I just want to find somebody that's 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 solid. They, did you guys watch the the convention last night? A little bit, yeah. Yep they uh, they did a recap on it. They did a, a two hour recap, hour and a half recap, well, and they said like, one. You said what? It only lasted two hours, didn't it? Well, I said afterwards though. Afterwards, oh, the, all okay. the channels they did a little recap, and gotcha. they said, uh, "Did you notice that nobody talked about Donald Trump's policy?" They only talked about his character. Well, that's mistake. They only number. talked about his character. That's a mistake. And and I don't know that 
we're going to win America over through their. I don't know. I don't know if that's the way we're going to be able to do it. Well, um, if you remember, that's what they did four years ago. That's what the Democratic Party did four years ago, and it didn't work. Well, well, but that's that's but that's, that's political standard, because because they're still doing it to the re the Republicans are still doing it to the Democrats too. That's political standard. That's the problem. And, and if we're honest. It was because the policies of Donald Trump, one, were not really non-existent. It was, I'm going to build the wall and Mexico is going to pay for it. How did that work out? It was, yeah. you know, so so the policies that he put in place or that he said, it was like, first of all, that don't make no sense. Secondly, how do we c combat against that when you really don't haven't given us anything to work with? And so now I think that the, the conversation of his character is because even the policies that he has or the things that he's done get overshadowed by his character, by the all mm -hmm. by the consistent things that we are hearing and, and getting as far as news and breaking news this and breaking news that. So it's hard to cut through that to get to this is the issue I have with your policy because I got to first deal with the mess that you you present to us on a daily basis. That's true. It's true. It's like trying to talk to your kid about their homework after they cuss the teacher out. <laughs> and, and they got a messy diaper. So, I mean, it's like... And they got... It's, <laughs> it's like, hold up, bro. We're we, we, we going to get to the homework in a minute. Hold up. And they flipped off the bus driver. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you called your friend stupid. Right. Like, right. No, right. nasty. Uh, your friend nasty. All right. Real quick, I want to throw this out before we... Because we got about 15 minutes. I want to throw this out. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> All right. So the other thing, because we're comparing our, our, our president to a kid, and it's so appropriate. Have you seen the meme? Right, have you seen the meme? Three men and a baby. There's a no. there's a meme that has uh, Bush, Clinton, and and Obama as three men, and then a little short Trump as baby. Oh wow! No, I have this. Yeah, you gotta yeah, look I'm that up. That all right. Hey, I will say this before we go on to the next thing yeah. that Kamala Harris did when she when she uh, did the the speech when, when she accepted, you know, that she was the vice president uh, nomination, whatever. Um, she, her being a prosecutor did attack some of his policies. She's been the only one that I've seen that actually did and almost did it like she was a litigator. It was it was it was masterful. pretty fascinating. It was massive. Uh, and, and so. Uh, I think yesterday or last night was more so of the feeling of uh, a unity type deal. I don't know what tom tonight, tomorrow is going to be. I know tomorrow is yeah. supposed to be Obama, but I think that's probably going to solidify a little bit more going into policies uh, versus what was last night. I think last night was more of a kumbaya, let's band together, yeah. especially when Michelle yeah. Obama spoke and pretty much. That type of that type of speech that she gave last night wouldn't have worked in the convention, yeah. Because she almost spoke like like a mother last night, and I don't know if anybody had caught that or not. Um, it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty sensitive, and so um, some people liked it, some people didn't. But it it was it was a different it was a different way to come at it, and I don't know. I don't think the next I don't think tonight or tomorrow will have that same feel. I think it'll be more so policy driven. Um, but I think last night uh, just to not hone on policies it was more of a hey let's unify let's come together and then let's move forward then we'll then we'll strike the iron and hit it next time <clears throat> that's the way that's what i got from it so yeah and that's that's kind of really what i want to, to kind of pivot to was kamala and um you know her one it's historic <laughs> right um but then to yeah. me i for me I, i'm just looking at and saying that really of what was there she seems like the most logical and obvious choice now, I'm going to throw this out there. Is she the insurance policy if Joe doesn't make it all the way through? What do you mean? Oh, you mean... Like you his mean life? Like he dies? Yeah, because because let's just be honest. We, we're dealing with two folks that have questionable uh, mental acuity right now. Right? Well, hey, so did Ronald Reagan. Yeah, well, Dude, yeah, because the, the psychic... Last his last three and a half years, he won't always there, bro. He wasn't there. Seriously. But, but Nancy and them psychics had him. They kept him together. <laughs> <laughs> I 
holding up Moses' arms. It was like Aaron. It was like Aaron holding up Moses' arms. Like, come on. You don't make it, baby. Just come on. You know how it's just a little bit more. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that is cold. Oh, yeah. Again, we got a we got a whole nother issue with the fact that he, he put electric chin ads, man. What is that about? Oh, Jesus. Kevin, you ain't right for that, man. They were just holding oh. him up. Just holding him up. Let's, holding let's, him let's up. Just make Underneath it the podium, like, let's just get holding, holding his legs. It's like, <laughs> oh I don't know why that's so funny to me. We done wrecked this whole show, man. Come on, this is your show, man. Let's go. I'm sorry. Whew. I'm good. Let's go. So, yeah, I mean, we've got <laughs> Derek, you stupid. We got, I mean, we got, we have two men in their, what, 70s? Late 70s. Late 70s. Who, one, I don't know if he was ever all there. And then you have one who is is decidedly, or, you know, fading. there are times fading. where it's like, is, is he there? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying which one is which, but. Oh, I think we know which one is I which. think we do, too. Woman, 77. child, TV. Man, they asked me to say woman, child, <laughs> TV, man. All right. I don't know. It's it's that's, that's a unique question, man. I don't I don't know, man. I mean, I think about when, shoot, Jimmy Carter wasn't young. Reagan wasn't young. Daddy Bush definitely wasn't young. Um, w was younger. Clinton was younger, but I mean, ugh. I mean, I I don't know, man. I, it's it's. I don't know if she's in there as an insurance policy or not. Honestly, I figured it was going to be her anyway. Yeah. Um. Even after when you know he was when he hit South Carolina and didn't look back, I figured it was going to be her in the first place. Um. Yeah. Even though she dropped out before the other ones did, before Warren and Sanders and all them. And Klobuchar, uh, I really thought it was going to be her, regardless of um, her her uh, past as a litigator, regardless of what uh, people are upset about about her putting people of color in jail, um, even for, even regardless of quote unquote as they say now that she shouldn't be allowed to be president because she wasn't a natural born citizen, which is a hoax to begin with. Um, Grace, and Grace so, isn't involved in it at all, though. Oh no, not at all. Not at all. No, none whatsoever. Yeah, I knew. I knew it was going to be a black woman. I, 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 I at least was like, it's going to be a black woman. Oh, we knew that back in what March? Yeah. Who, it, who else could it, it have been? Um, what's her name? Rice. Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> he said Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Cardi B. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we had it. Clean B. Uh, I mean, since we had it, but I, back to to your insurance policy. If, if I look at if I look at the decision of Kamala, which I'll I'll be honest with you, I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't. But um, watching her, I was actually pretty thrilled when she threw her her, uh, her name in the hat uh, for president. That was pretty to me pretty exciting, pretty promising. Um, but I think she serves twofold. Number one. Yes, she probably is a an insurance policy. I think she could step in to a scenario like that and handle uh, handle herself accordingly. Yep. But I also think she brings a little more weight to the vice presidency. She does. Um, mm-hmm. She can be used in ways. Figurehead. Yeah, she can be used in ways that uh, the typical vice president and and it, who who would who would not know what type of vice president he would need better. Than than Joe Biden, yeah, you know he's true. he's he's done the job, yeah, you know that's right. Um, and so he understands, yeah. okay, this what the public sees versus what you actually have to do is on two different levels. You're 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 not just going to have to be polished, you know, and and a and a hand waver, you know. There's some there's some political 
maneuvering that you're going to have to be and some weight you're going to have to be able to throw around in a very quiet Focus. fashion. So, yeah. yeah, I think I think that honestly, they were thinking twofold. Yeah. Not just could she take his place, but what can we do while he's in office, mm-hmm. you know, um, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term? Well, I was about to use a really bad example. I was about to say she would be, a, you know, she would make a Democratic Dick Cheney, but uh, Biden is not necessarily that far gone. So as anyway. long as she don't go, as long as she don't go hunting and shoot somebody. <laughs> And then Dick Cheney, let's just be honest, Dick Cheney was supposed to be finding the vice president and was like, oh, hey, yeah, it's me. I'm your vice president. I'm what you're looking for. Oh, okay. Okay. Oops. (laughs) Terrible. Yeah, we're bad. Yes. But it's just how we talk. That's all right. I'm okay with it. Derek, what you holding on to back there? Because you are. Hey, you know, you know the Obama's gonna be back if Joe get in office. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jay Z gonna they, be back they in gonna the White be House consultant. too. They gonna be consulting. Like, let they in this quarter right now. They like Joe. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Why you get so close? He's like, he leans, he leans to the camera. He like this close to the camera. Joe. <laughs> They're like Joe, stop playing. Like, <laughs> I don't. You ever you ever get around somebody that you get nervous when they start talking? That's how I feel about Joe sometimes. I'd be like Uncle Joe, man, just, just because because he, he he says it before he thinks, man. Yeah. It's I'm like, like hey, and, and it's like, like you don't vote Democrat. What'd you just say? Oh, it's that, Joe, it's that, why'd you say that, man? Because he could have. Because uncle. he could have said it eight years ago. Well, because he could have said that, it years ago, and and, and got away with it, and got away with it. Completely that's different. true. Yeah, that's true. That's he true. You say you're that. right about that. You're right. That's that's like that white friend that come to the picnic with you. Nope. He come with you. It's the yeah. difference between coming with somebody and then coming on your own. Right. You know, hey. you come you come with somebody. The person that go in before you was like, "What's up, baby?" Did Joe come behind him? He's like, "What's up, baby?" Like you come by yourself with the hand up, they're like, "Yo, who is this dude?" Like, <laughs> who is? like <laughs> hey, who is but here's dude? the thing. Hey, here's the thing. There's still stuff that the person that came with you can't say, though. True. True. That's true. Am I wrong? True. But am I wrong? But 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 if 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 you got your homeboy vouching for you, they're gonna be like, "Ah, oh, man, he cool. He like he's just tripping, man. Like, yeah. don't worry about him." Nope. I'm telling you, it's it's some stuff you can. It's some stuff. Some it's stuff. Some stuff. I, okay, some stuff, not all stuff. Right. I'll give you that. There's some stuff that's still off limits. Did you see that? Play. Did you see that commercial with uh, Snoop Dogg and uh, uh, Martha Stewart? And she said something like for sizzle, and he was like, yeah. Martha, we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Totino's, the Totino's commercial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totino's. Yeah. So Martha, I thought we, we talked, talked about, about this. We talked about. That's this. Joe. Yeah. That's Uncle Joe. Joe. Joe, <laughs> Joe came. Joe Joe came from that interview and Barack was on the phone like Joe. <laughs> we talked about we this. Talked man. About this. Bro, We've we been kicking it for eight years. Did you notice in eight years you did not have a platform to say nothing? You was the hype man. You come in second oh. to the barbecue, like, hey, what's up? That's what you do, Uncle Joe. You out front. You gotta act different now, man. Come on. But I mean, think about the it though. World looking also, because so he ain't slave and slave no more. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul. We giving Uncle Joe the business tonight, man. We giving him the oh, uh, Steve. You want to say hype, man, bro? That's the first thing that came to mind was Flavor Flav. Just say it. We give we giving him Stephen A. Smith. You know how Stephen A. Smith will completely turn you down? Completely. He'd be like, and I know him. That's my homeboy. We kick it. We go out for drinks. I absolutely love him. But he is the worst human being <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> it's Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, I'm going to vote for him. He can come to my house, eat greens, yams. That's my dude. But Uncle Joe is absolutely horrible. Like, we, we can't do Uncle Joe like this, man. But, but here's oh. the thing. Point, look at the difference, though, of how when Joe made his statement, it was like, dude, Joe, for real? But when Hillary made her, her hot sauce in my bag, it was like, shut mm. up. 
Just, just Hillary. Hillary. So she was the one that came by herself and was like, what up? Right, right. She was like, I got my hot sauce. And it was like, whatever. Even if, even if that was true, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> even, if, even if you did, without, without pandering aside, even if you do keep hot sauce in your bag, shut up. Right. She pulled the hot Come sauce on, out and still had the, she had the seal on her. She ain't opened it yet. Right. No, you ain't using it. Because you know you ain't using it on nothing. That's that joke that you get to say around your black friends, but then you get around new black friends and it don't go over well. Nope. That's bad. That's bad. All right, fellas. Look, it is the hour. We have had a great conversation. Um, Not already. It's-, it's listen, these this time flies by sometimes when we just jumping in here. I wish we had more time to talk about Kevin, man. About me. You said about me? No, Kamala. Oh, okay. Not, I thought you said yeah. Kevin. I was like, what? No, but Karen, Karen, oh, no, 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 no. Listen. She ain't talking to me like that. <laughs> so do you want, y'all want to talk about her next week? We'll we'll chop it up on her next week. We'll dedicate it to her next week. Because then after the convention. Maybe we'll have some new material. It's possible too. Yeah, we'll have some new material. Because everything's going on. Uh, All right. But listen, it's been a great pleasure with you guys this afternoon, this evening on Chop It Up every Tuesday here, 530 Arizona time, 730 Central, and also now on YouTube. So, um, catch us. What? Yeah, I put it on the YouTube what? channel. Oh, big time. Okay. Trying to do something. So. All right. So, love you guys. Have a great one. We will talk to you next hey. week. All right. Peace. Ma- Mama, I made it.